Hey guys, how are y'all doing today? The country's best barbecue. Finger licking good. Brisket. Ribs. Sausage. Barbecue chicken. And falling off the bone. That's ridiculously good. It really does melt in your mouth. The smell hits you in the nose. I love it. Rub it down. Tend the pits, load the fires. Smoke them up. Sit back, relax, have a great time. This is bite sized coast to coast. This is really good. The best barbecue. Super, super good. Man, I gotta get in there. First stop, Houston. I repost things from the pit room and I'm like, hey, you know, you need to try these out. And they're addicted to it. They come back and they're like, oh God, you know, what is it? Give me the recipe. I can't because honestly, it's the way we cook it, it's pure love. We don't hold back. We use a lot of black pepper, a lot of spice in all of our food, got an extra punch to it. Everything's very full flavored. Yeah, I'm Michael Sambrooks. We're at the Pit Room at 1201 Richmond Avenue, right in the heart of Montrose. One meat, brisket, please. A lot of people, when they come to Houston, they want to eat barbecue. There's tons of good barbecue now, so you got to be on your game every day. So the competition is really intense. Everybody's always judging you by what they can cook at home. Well, this is definitely one of the best venison sausages I've had that, that wasn't home done. So you got to be at least as good as that. And then you've got all these other barbecue restaurants that have been around for 30, 40 years. So a new barbecue place opening up, you really have to commit to high quality. Mm. This is really good. I mean, wow, it really does melt in your mouth. So there's someone in this building 24 hours a day. Because there's a guy that comes in at 6 a.m., there's a guy that comes in at 2 p.m., there's a guy that comes in at 10 at night to tend the pits, load the fires, load the meats, and all that kind of stuff. Reaching our temperature right there. Yeah, so it never stops. So we cook it the right way. It's offset pits, all post dough, but all the briskets cook for a minimum of 12 hours. We use the finest ingredients we can. All of our meat is USDA prime. All of our pepper is ground fresh for us every week. So we use actually three different grains. We use a coarse, an extra coarse, and a cracked pepper on our briskets. So you get all those different textures when you're biting on it. That's ridiculously good. We wanted to do our own style of food. It's the South. You gotta get these some fried pork skins, right? The Mexican corn is to die for. We do a little bit of a Tex-Mex flair to our barbecue. GQ came through and they featured us, and one of the one of the main dishes they pointed out was our smoked brisket taco. I mean, you're getting a, a barbecue taco? Anything on a tortilla? You can't go wrong. So fresh flour tortillas with smoked brisket fat. Yeah, I love Mexican food, so I just always get tacos. And then you have the chicken taco. Queso flameado, poblano peppers, and grilled garlic. If you come in with a group of people, I always recommend getting one of our feasts. You know, the feast number one or feast number two feeds up to eight people. It's basically a sampler of all the meats that we do. It comes with beef ribs, your choice of sides. It's a huge sampler plate. You know, it's more food than, you know, four or six people can eat. We got pork, we got brisket, we got mac and cheese. Hey guys, how are y'all doing today? Our first year open, we made Texas Monthly Top 50. That was a huge goal of ours. You know, Culture Map awarded us uh, Best New Restaurant of the Year when we opened. That was a huge deal for us. So what I get a lot is, thank you for opening a barbecue restaurant that we don't have to drive two hours to get to. From Texas to Atlanta and a beef rib the size of your head. What I have here is Mother Nature's beef lollipop. This is our world famous smoked short rib. True traditional Texas barbecue with a little Georgia kiss on it. Hey there, I'm Nick Melvin. I'm the culinary director for Fox Brothers Barbecue. In Georgia, you've got that great spot, right? You're in between the North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, you got Texas over here. So you've got a merging of vinegars and maybe some fruit flavors like peaches. This place is life changing. I like the sides a lot. They're really cooked, real wholesome and real good. They have a real excellent quality of meat. And I've been coming here since the first day they opened. It's traditional Texas barbecue, smoked over hickory, low and slow. We do ribs, we do pork butts, we do fantastic short rib plates. It's kind of like a Fred Flintstone dinosaur bone. Just basically it's like eating delicious meat butter. So come on down, we'll get you fed. So these are our world famous certified Angus beef short ribs. Once they're smoked overnight, we wrap them in plastic wrap. What this does is basically consolidates the form, makes them nice and tight. Also lets them finish cooking, if you will. We're gonna make a cut right here. There she blows. That beautiful, oh yeah, sexiness. We take a little piece of bread, 
take your rib, very small plate to scale, and there you go. There's moments in your life when you just sit down and you're grateful. We're from Colorado and we've been here one other time and that's why we had to come back again. I'm gonna order the short rib. Yeah, I'm gonna try the beef short rib. Good advice. That's awesome. Not the best I ever had. Falls right off the bone. That beef rib is straight fire. I mean, taste-wise, it's only 10 out of 10. Next time I'm coming back for breakfast. <laughs> Day two of those. We get requests all the time of open in Birmingham, open in Nashville. And so it's really great, the stretch that we have as a restaurant to get people interested and excited about what we do here. So you can take the tradition that's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years and kind of merge it into the flavor profile of this awesome city that we're in. Still to come. We say we're the best food court barbecue <laughs> in Texas because we're probably the only food court barbecue in Texas. And later, Ooh. smoked gator. All right, head these guys out to the smoker. You're watching Bite Size Coast to Coast. Let's keep the queue coming. Ooh, good idea. <laughs> this time in a food court. Hi, I'm Patrick Fiegis. I'm Aaron Smith. Welcome to Fiji's Barbecue. Best food court barbecue in Texas. I got the sliced brisket and it was pretty much falling apart. I get it and just slaughter it in barbecue sauce and super, super good. I go from the baked potato, uh, the brisket sandwich, all the two meat plates. I could have eaten this with my hands if I wanted to. We say we're the best food court barbecue <laughs> in Texas because I mean, we're probably the only food court barbecue in Texas. We'll claim that title. We joke around, it's like, if you can't pronounce it, it's gotta be good. Yeah, like the harder it is to pronounce, the better the barbecue. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I say Vegas, I guess? Fee Fiji's. You want me to go ask somebody? I don't want to screw that up. <laughs> Figs. Fegs. When, when people ask me, I always say Fiji's and they laugh. <laughs> we actually have a shirt where we have the phonetic pronunciations of the name. I pronounce it good barbecue. Originally looking for something above ground. We call this our subterranean restaurant, and this opportunity kind of fell into our lap, and we felt like it was a really good place to start. 13,000 people is a pretty great captive audience. I know that Texans really like barbecue, but I don't think most people eat barbecue three times a week. Is that my baked potato? Yeah, that's All right, just give me the cheese and uh, sour cream. Yeah, well, give me some butter, some butter on that. Kind of hooked me up on that one. We feel pretty lucky that we're in a place where we see a lot of the same faces multiple times. I've got a lot of regulars, so people come multiple times a week. I just started at an office building nearby, and it's literally amazing. I feel like because we're in a food court, people are usually underestimating it. They're like, okay, food court barbecue, I don't know about this. I'm just here just visiting, and I wasn't expecting something like this to be in a food court area. It's called American Barbecue. It's we borrow from the Carolinas, we borrow from Kansas City style, we borrow from all over. Houston is a huge international population. You see that in the food that we do. We take a lot of flavors from around the world and incorporate them into the spices that we use in our sides. I think a lot of our sides menu is very light. Everything's from scratch, everything's really vegetable driven. I think the fact that our sides have a lot of variety and freshness to them really kind of helps broaden our menu. If I'm a first time customer, I am getting a two meat plate. You gotta get brisket because it's Texas. I would add some whole hog to that plate. And then for my two sides, I would get our Brussels sprouts and the sweet potato and banana mashers. Probably the best combination of food you're gonna get in Texas. And if I had one thing that I had to eat, it would be the peanut butter and jelly chocolate cake. Ooh, good idea. <laughs> We're able to learn a lot of lessons here, kind of manage things on a smaller scale and grow from there. I don't know that there's another food court where you can get barbecue like ours. We can't leave Texas without checking out this spot. We like to call it Houston barbecue. We want to bring the backyard barbecue vibe to the masses. It's spicy, got some prizes in it. My name is Kui Hong. I'm a co-owner of Blood Brothers Barbecue. My name is Terry Wong, one of the co-owners of Blood Brothers Barbecue. Hi, I'm Robin Wong. You're at Blood Brothers Barbecue in Bel Air, Texas. 
But what do you call three close friends? You call them blood brothers. I grew up with Terry and Robbie. We went to high school together. We just developed a bond. After school, we'd go eat. You could go find Vietnamese food, Chinese food, Korean food. So we take all the flavors that we grew up eating and try to incorporate it into our food. First bite. First, first bite. Here we go. It's actually a lot of flavor. You might have a new spot. Having a restaurant wasn't ever part of the plan. Um, just kind of happened. Ooh. Terry and I have been running a bar for a long time. We started running our steak night. We would do special parties. He'd bring some barbecue. Then people wanted more. And then a lot of people are like, hey, you got something here. Y'all should try to do something with it. So we started taking orders. We bought a trailer, started doing pop-ups around the city, did that for five years. I found these guys when they were still out in their trailer, smoking ribs out at Buffalo Bayou. And they really were a backyard. They were just smoking the stuff out of a trailer. The name Blood Brothers, within half a nanosecond, I was like, I love it. It's about being good friends, it's, it's, I and mean, that's what barbecue is. Barbecue is something you share with your good friends and your family, and we, we thought it was great. We thought it was clever. A hot lake mix going on here. Well, it's cooked with love. You can definitely feel and taste the community and the culture. Secret pork seasoning. Mm. When it comes to flavor, it's there. I mean, you want spicy, it's there. You want tangy, it's there. You want a little bit of sweet. You can kind of taste the sweet there as well. You know, we still use the traditional cuts of meat that you would find in barbecue. You know, your brisket, your ribs, sausage, but we just want to kind of amp up the flavors a little bit. Smoked turkey banh mi here, it's, it's all good, man. You got brisket fried rice. One of the best in Houston. Just the texture, the outside is, you get that crunch feeling, what you want in a brisket, and then in the inside is just nice and juicy, it just melts off. Will they really shine though? is in the specials. Kui is always, man, just dreaming up crazy combinations. And like I see that posted, I'm like, man, I got to get in there. The response from the Bel Air community has been great. The industry in general. We actually just got a good review from the Chronicle, from the Texas Monthly. We actually won the Culture Map uh, Best New Restaurant. I think what kind of separates us is, we like to call it Houston barbecue. We want to bring the backyard barbecue vibe to the masses. Up next, an entire alligator smoked and stuffed with chicken. It's quite a spectacle. People are in awe seeing a whole alligator being served to them. And later, one of the best barbecue spots in the country. Barbecue for me is a 24 hour deal. So when you come here, you actually are coming over to my house to eat. You're watching Bite Size Coast to Coast. Let's see what they're smoking in Chicago. It's quite a spectacle once the alligator does hit the, the restaurant floor. Wow. Phones are out, people are in awe seeing a whole alligator being served to them. Being from New Orleans, uh, the whole alligator was something that I had sourced for many months, and so now we're able to offer it on a daily basis over at Frontier. Ooh. My name is Ryan Jupiter, and I'm the chef owner of Frontier in Wicker Park, Chicago. Frontier is known for its casual atmosphere as well as the whole animal service. We've become the, the place to go for your large format wild game and meat selections. We come in, we prepare all the meats for you, we carve up the meats, serve all the sides, sit back, relax, have a great time with your friends, your family. It's a really good time. People always think that because of all the wild game and the whole animals that we prepare here that I'm an avid hunter or I grew up doing this. Being from New Orleans, I did grow up eating some unique items, but the whole animal element actually I took on once we did Frontier. It's quite a, a spectacle once the alligator does uh, hit the, the restaurant floor. You know, phones are out, uh, people are in somewhat of awe, you know, that they're, they're seeing a whole alligator being served to them. Alligator, uh, for one, is a very lean meat. I mean, you can see it's no fat on these, and we like to use smaller alligators. You get larger than that, and you start dealing with more fat. Alligator fat it just doesn't taste very good. We take the whole alligators, we rub it with some olive oil, so all of our spices adhere to the alligator. Now just some minced garlic. And you want to rub it and really get it in there. Next, we have some Cajun spice. All right, now we have a mixture of lemon zest, salt, and a little bit more oregano. So we would let these sit for a day, just refrigerate it, and that just allows the 
spices to really seep into the meat. We also stuff the caveat of the alligator with chicken. In Louisiana, they hunt alligators with rotten chicken. Obviously, we're not stuffing it with rotten, you know, but it's just a fun play on the way that alligators are hunted. It also gives the groups, people that might be a little scared of alligator, another protein option in the meal. All right, head these guys out to the smoker. Alligator can be cooked a lot of different ways, not just smoked. You can braise alligator, you can bake alligator. It's a very versatile protein, and it's also extremely healthy for you. The texture of alligator, for me, is a mixture of what would be frog legs and chicken. It's like chicken-y, right? Yeah, pretty good. My favorite cut of the alligator would be uh, from the leg area or up in the cheek area, more like the dark meat of, of, of the alligator. It's real tasty, it's like a good type of greasy. I think it's pretty good, I like it with the barbecue. It's got a kick to it. The tail is gonna give you the most of the meat and that's, those are like pork tenderloins. It's a blank canvas and what you give to the alligator is what you get back out of it. It tastes the smoky flavors coming from it. It tastes like chicken to me. With so many great restaurants in Chicago, it's truly no experience like Frontier. If you're looking for adventurous, if you're looking for a unique experience, if you're looking for just fun, come to Frontier. From Chicago to Texas, where this spot is killing. So we're already seeing a line right now. Why do you think people wait? Because it's good. Back in 1950, this was like the first cafeteria for the high schools and also the intermediate. We have actually pictures of the kids when they were lining up to go into the building. If anything came full circle, that was it. When you drive by, there's a special smell, and that's really all you need to know. It, it, there's something special in the air here. everybody got to try it. That's a huge plate. Tell them Ronnie made it. Ronnie made it? Yeah. The secret, we buy the best product we can get our hands on and it's up to us to mess it up. This is the best barbecue I've had, but this barbecue chicken. Take good meat, put it on a pit, you burn a good clean fire. The byproduct is barbecue that's outstanding. The food is actually the best barbecue you can get in the state, I think. Oh, it's delicious. It's the best in Texas. I cook, so I know. <laughs> We just had the top 100 come out, and the barbecue place is number three in 16,000 restaurants. I want to be number one. <laughs> we make every single thing from scratch every day here. I uh, heard the brisket was really good and uh, the beef ribs as well, so we'll, we'll get both of those. We're known for our beef rib countrywide. I mean, we go through probably 1,500 pounds minimum of brisket a day, and on the weekends, it's, it's actually a lot more. Well, I go to church right there, and I always saw the lineups here every Sunday, like all the way out in the street, even on like summer days, so I figured it has to have really good food. We started that whole thing in Houston, you know, with the line and how we created a sense of urgency for people to come in and, and eat. Choppy baked potato, choppy baked potatoes. We're always taking meat off the pit. We're always putting meats on the pit. If somebody waits in line for dry food or bad food, that's not good. If it's good food, why not wait like 30 minutes to an hour? But it's worth it. You know, we're not shooting for, is, this, is it okay or is this okay service? We don't want that. Okay is just okay. I don't know if that makes sense. This guy loves barbecue so much, he lives at the restaurant. So when you come here, you actually are coming over to my house to eat. We're headed back to Texas next. We're back on Bite Size Coast to Coast. I love it. Let's get one last bite in Houston. It's an incredible place. The more fat, the better. So the, the fatty brisket they have here has done wonders for me. You have to get to Central Texas to get any kind of barbecue like this. I'm Grant Pinkerton, and I'm the owner and pitmaster of Pinkerton's Barbecue in Houston, Texas. I started doing barbecue when I was around uh, nine, but it kind of started out with just grilling. And I actually got into what we actually call real barbecue uh, when I was 12. I chose Houston because I was born and raised here. Houston is my home. It's always been my home. So one of the things that makes Texas barbecue unique is that we focus on beef. 
We cook brisket, we cook beef ribs, we use a lot of beef in our sausage. Texas is cattle country. In November, I was nominated and selected for the Forbes uh, 30 Under 30, which is the uh, 30 most influential people under 30 years old in the food and drink industry in the United States. I think one of the cool things is that the selection committee kind of started understanding the art behind barbecue, and I think it's really cool that on a national scale, Texas barbecue is getting the recognition that a lot of other cuisines are. It's a great barbecue place. They do a great job over here. They've got uh, some great bark on the brisket, great choppy sandwich. It's an incredible place. Come here about every week. Uh, usually get uh, brisket. The ribs are the best and that we've had in all of Houston. Unlike most restaurant tours, I actually uh, do live here. I live upstairs. Um, so barbecue for me is a 24-hour deal. It was something that, you know, the job kind of demanded of me. So when you come here, you actually are coming over to my house to eat. Full experience of Pinkerton's Barbecue starts with the walk up to the restaurant, the music, you open the old door, you come inside, the smell hits you in the nose. You look to your left, the big bar with the stone background, you look to the right and there's a bunch of friendly faces on the line ready to serve your barbecue. You As a first time customer of Pinkerton's, the things you have to get here are a slice of moist cut brisket, uh, the glazed pork ribs, uh, the turkey's really awesome and our jalapeno cheese sausages. As far as sides go, we have a great mac and cheese. Our jalapeno cheese rice is the only jalapeno cheese rice in Texas. It's an old family recipe. Everything we do here is fresh. So we start with all raw ingredients. We create all of our sides from scratch. Our level of customer service we take really seriously. During Harvey, we actually decided we were going to stay open and we were going to try to cook throughout the storm. We knew people were going to need food, so we cooked all night. We also opened up for anybody in the neighborhood that could get here to come and eat. One of the few places open here in the Heights was uh, Pinkerton's Barbecue. They had, they had alcohol, they had air conditioning, and they had barbecue. We want that family atmosphere. That to me is part of the Texas barbecue experience, and that's something that makes Texas barbecue special and something that I wanted to make sure continued with Pinkerton's Barbecue. The next thing uh, on, my, on my list to do is just be 1% better tomorrow. This is Bite Size Coast to Coast. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you know the drill.